that's good. Question number three from P1, October 2019, International A-Level. Um, in this question, you must show all stages of your working. Solutions relying on calculated technology are not acceptable. Okay, so I'll explain why they write that in a minute. So here we have figure two showing a sketch of the curve C with equation Y equals X squared minus 5X plus 13. So that's a curve. The straight line L passes through the origin and intersects C at the points M and N as shown. Okay, find showing your working the coordinates of M. So um, basically we're going to find what the coordinates of this point M is. Now M is the minimum point of C, of the curve C. Now there are two ways to find the minimum point of the curve. Um, uh, one of the ways that we learned in P1 is basically by completing the square. That's how you can find the minimum or the maximum or the vertex basically of a quadratic equation. This is a quadratic equation. So to find the minimum point or the maximum point of a quadratic, we can complete the square. So if we complete the square here, we're gonna have a square bracket with x inside it. We have to make sure it says 1x squared, which it does, so that's fine. Um, and then we write the minus sign inside the bracket and then a half of just the coefficient of this term. So that's going to be minus 5 over 2. Right? Now, if I expanded this, I would get x squared minus 5x plus 25 over 4. I don't want the plus 25 over 4. Okay, if I'm just looking at these two terms at the beginning. I, wanna, I want to um, get rid of that 25 over 4, so I have to subtract 25 over 4. Now, what I've written here is exactly the same as these two terms. If I expand this bracket and, and to take away 25 over 4, I'll get x squared minus 5x. But I've got a plus 13 at the end, which I have to add on to it. And then when I just simplify that, I have x minus 5 over 2 squared. Now, 20, minus 25 over 4 plus... 13 over 1, which becomes something over 4, multiply by 4, 4 times 10 is 40, 4 times 3 is 12, that's 52. Okay, so you've got basically you've got to do 52 minus 25, which is, that's going to give you plus 27 over 4, right? So the vertex, which is, which are the coordinates of M, okay, the vertex, which are the coordinates of M, are given by Okay, the number that you need to put in this bracket to make it zero. Okay, the number that you need to put into this bracket to make it zero, which is five over two. And this number that's left over, 27 over four. Okay, so that is the coordinates of M. Those are the coordinates of M. And the reason why, okay, is this, this bracket will never ever be negative. Because you go to, whatever goes into here is going to be squared. So even if, it, if, if you put a value of x which causes it to be negative, it's going to be squared. It's going to give you a positive value. So the lowest value that this bracket can ever reach is 0. And that's when x equals 5 over 2. When x equals 5 over 2, this thing will become 0. And when this is 0, when this bracket is 0, then y will equal 27 over 4. So that's the lowest it can ever reach. It can never go lower than that. Okay, so that's the reason why that, that's the vertex, and those are the coordinates of M. There's also an alternative, alternative way to find the coordinates of M by differentiating. You can find the gradient of the turning point is going to be when is, is going to be zero. The gradient at M, if you draw a tangent at M, it's going to be horizontal, isn't it? So you could say, uh, find dy dx, so you can say dy dx is equal to 2x minus 5, and you know that at M, at m you can say dy dx is equal to zero so x is equal to five over two okay and then you to you can find what y is by putting it back into this equation okay so you put five over two squared minus five times five over two plus 13 it will give you the same point see x equals five over two and y equals 27 over four it will give you exactly the same point if you did it this way Okay, uh, generally with quadratics, if it's a quadratic equation, using completing the squares, kind of you get both uh, coordinates at the same time when you did that one thing. So it's generally easier. Okay, all right, so that's part A done of this question. Now, part B, it says find the coordinates of n. So if we go back to the diagram, um, n is a, the other point where the line and the curve intersect. Right? There's two points where they intersect. One is at the turning point and one, the other point is at n. So basically, 
uh, what we need to do is we need to solve the equation okay of where this line and this curve intersect okay so we know that this line we need to find the equation of line l so in order to to solve part b first thing we need to do is we need to find the equation of line l okay to find the equation of a straight line we need two things we need to know its gradient right and we need to know any point on the line okay now we know that this line passes through the point m and at m we know the coordinates of m was 5 over 2 and 27 over 4 5 over 2 and 27 over 4 and the gradient of this line okay the gradient of this line we can work out because this is origin 0 0 and this is 5 over 2 and 27 over 4 so we can work out the gradient of this line can't we okay the gradient is going to be y1 minus y2 which is 27 over 4 minus 0 over 5 over 2 minus 0 right which is like 27 over 4 divided by 5 over 2 which is like 27 over 4 times 2 over 5 yeah they cancel out here we're left with 27 over 10 so the gradient of our line is 27 over 10 okay so we go back so we know the gradient of our line is 27 over 10 okay so we know now enough information to find the equation of l yes sorry okay so okay so we need to find the equation of line l now uh, always a good suggestion is to look back at the diagram where you know the line is because we said point m lies on the line but there's a point that will make life a lot easier for us that also lies on the line which is origin okay which is zero zero so in that case we know the y-intercept is zero so straight away we can say the equation of line l is y equals 27 over 10 x we don't have to find the y intercept if we did find the y intercept using these you'd end up getting zero but we can see the line passes through the origin so always looking back at the the diagram where it came from helps you to make life easier sometimes okay all right so we found the equation of line l we need to find the coordinates of point n okay now point n is a point where the line and the curve intersect so if we just go back to get the equation of the curve which is y equals x squared minus 5x plus 13 so you have y equals x squared minus 5x okay plus 13 that's the equation of the curve all right where this line and this curve intersect okay is given by the solution of these two equations when you solve them simultaneously so if i replace the y here with 27 over 27 x over 10 27 x over 10 equals x squared minus 5x plus 13 okay um, and I solve this equation I will find the points at which they intersect right so let's just get rid of this 10 let's multiply everything by 10 so you have 27x equals 10x squared minus 50x plus 130 all right so if we bring the x's together you got 10x squared minus this is going to give minus uh, 77x plus 130 equals zero now i already know that they intersect when x equals 5 over 2. i already know that so i can use the fact that basically one of the solutions is x equals 5 over 2 so i can say 2x equals 5 so i can say 2x minus 5 equals zero is going to be uh, one of the you know ways to get the solution so 2x minus 5 must be one of the factors okay so now i can work out what the other factor is going to be i know that 2x times 5 gives me 10x squared so i'm going to have 2x times 5x gives me 10x squared and minus 5 times something gives me 130 okay so 5 into 130 goes to 26 times okay and that has to be minus because you're going to have a, a plus there 
So minus times minus is plus. So that's 5x minus 26. And you can check to make sure you're going to have 7, 10x squared minus, that's going to be 52x minus 25x. 52 minus 25 is minus 77x and plus 130. So we know we've got the correct factors. So of course, I know that this one relates to the point we already know, m. So this must be the x coordinate, x equals 27 over, 26 over 5, must be the coordinate of the other point, which is n over here. So that's the x coordinate of n, 26 over 5. And now we need, we're left to find the y coordinate, which we can do very easily using this line. Instead of using the curve and squaring stuff, we can use y equals 27 over 10 x. So I know that y is equal to 27 over 10 times x. So when x is equal to 26 over 5, then y is equal to 27 over 10 times 26 over 5. Okay, which gives you, I'll use my calculator for the first time now. Okay. Hold on, so I'll do 27 over 10 times 26 over 5. Oops. Times 26 over 5. And that gives you 351 over 25. 351 over 25. And that's the coordinates of n, therefore, are uh, 20, uh, 26. So, sorry, that was 26 over 5 when x equals 26 over 5, yeah. Well, 26 over 5 and 351 over 25. Those are the coordinates of n, um, and that's what the question asks you to find. Part B, that's for 5 marks. Okay, so now going back to something which we mentioned earlier, solutions relying on calculator technology are not acceptable. So, for example, if you were to... Uh, solve these two equations simultaneously by, for example, um, at this stage, just sticking this in your calculator and writing down, you know, x equals 26 over 5 without showing any steps of you trying to factorize or anything or using the quadratic formula or completing the square, then you'll lose marks for that. Yeah. So, you know, you can just stick this equation in your calculator, as you know, and you can come out with the two, the, the two solutions. Okay, same thing with uh, it was the beginning of the question. Part A. Find the coordinates of M. In your calculator, if you stick this in your calculator, okay, in one of the modes, you can find the points where it hits the x-axis and you can also find the vertex. It will tell you the vertex, especially the, I think the newer types will tell you the vertex as well. So if you just wrote down the vertex without showing any steps, you will get no marks for that. That's, what it, that's why it's mentioning this statement, solutions relying on calculate technology are not acceptable. So you must show all stages of your working because they know your calculators that you have will help you to uh, find those things. So using your calculators afterwards to check your answers is perfectly fine. And it's good. It's a very good practice for you to do that. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's something that's encouraged. Um, but using your calculator and just writing down the answer. So if I just wrote down this answer without having all this these uh, this working shown, I'll get no marks for that. Same thing here. I might get some marks for the part of the first part of it, but once I've got to this stage, if I just wrote from from this stage here, from this from this line here onwards, I would lose all the marks for uh, the working and the answer for this this second part here, okay? So you should make sure that you use you show your steps clearly, show that you factorize, show you use the formula or completed the square and you know don't throw away marks so there's the answer for this question all right now for question number three part c of the p1 october 2019 paper um we're asked to use inequalities to define this region r okay this shaded region r okay okay one second this is 27 over 10 x sorry this is 27 over 10 x 27 over 10 x okay so this is the equation of the line 27 over 10 x this is the equation of the curve y equals x squared minus 5x plus 13 okay and this is the region r which we have to define using inequalities so we can see that this region r is bounded by three kind of sides you've got a straight line here and a straight line here so this straight line here is x equals zero that's the boundary for this line this line here is y equals 27 over 10x. 
And this curve, this curved part, its equation is y equals x squared minus 5x plus 13. Now, when we want to define the region R, okay, we can see that the region R is to the right of x equals x equals 0. It's to the right of x equals 0. And this is like a solid line here. You can see it's a solid line. So we can say that when x is greater than or equal to 0, that defines, that's one of the inequalities that defines R. But R is also above the line y equals 27 over 10x. So we can say another inequality that defines R is when y is greater than or e not equal to, just greater than 27 over 10x. Okay, we don't include the equal sign here because this line is a dotted line. Okay, it means the line itself is not included, but what's above it's included. And for the curve, you can see that the region R is defined or is shaded underneath the curve. So it's when y is less than x squared minus 5x plus 13. Again, the region R is in this dotted, the region, the, the, the curve is dotted here. So you just put less than without the equal sign. So it's y is less than x squared minus 5x plus 13 with all right is something that we have to um, understand if i left it like this and a lot of students would leave it like this okay then i've left it as x is greater than zero so that i'm going to include all of this range here now there is a part after n where y is less than x squared minus 5x plus 13 okay and it's also greater than this line so these three inequalities will also be true in this region here which is not shaded the, this region is where x is greater than zero where y is greater than 27 over 10x and where y is less than x squared minus 5x plus 13 okay so this region here must be excluded from our answer because it's not shaded all right so if i left the answer the way it looks over here okay then this region over here should also be shaded yes so what i need to do is i need to stop the inequality at this point over whoops on this point at this point over here what's going on here sorry at this point over here i want to stop it right there that way the shading will stop over there now what was that point the value of m was 2.5 the x value of m was 2.5 so this is the line x equals 2.5 all right so we should include here in this inequality that x is also less than 2.5 okay so we can combine these together into one inequality by saying x is greater than or equal to uh, so zero is um, x is more than um, or equal to zero and less than 2.5 so this included with those are the solutions to this question so that part here most of the students that i saw do this question they didn't include that part in the answer okay must stop at this point otherwise this would also be shaded if we left it without that okay so that's the answer for this question on, on this um, part c of question number three okay